So we found out some sad news earlier this week, and that was the announcement by the hitman, Bret Hart, that he is in the midst of battling prostate cancer. And I'm sure myself, along with everyone else, wishes Bret Hart the best in this biggest battle of his life, frankly. For a man that unfortunately, over the years, post his wrestling career, has faced different health challenges. And I, I hope this is just another battle that the hitman can never overcome and prove once again how he's the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. All right, but I figure now is an important time, as much as any, to call on a higher power to aid Brett in this ultimate fight. Will you bow your heads with me in a quick little prayer? Dear God, may you look after Brett Hart in this big battle of his life. May you give him the guidance to give prostate cancer the chemotherapy screw job. Will you give him the strength to excellently execute in this oh so critical battle? And will you once and for all help Bret Hart prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that prostate cancer is nothing more than a four out of ten in the big book of illnesses? We pray this unto you on everything in the Hunter, the Hurst, and the Helmsley. Amen. But in all seriousness, my best thoughts and prayers go out to the hitman, and I hope he conquers this battle and does it sooner rather than later. Welcome, everyone, to your favorite multi-time Golden Globe award-winning wrestling review show. Ah, piss. That's not it. Featuring your many, many times Tony Award-winning host, me, the Schlag Daddy, me, oh, Daddy, that's not it either. Like, I spent hours preparing for this, and I can't even get it right. It's like I got one job to do, and I screw it up, so what purpose do I serve? Holy hell. Anyways, let's see if I can get through the rest of this without any footballs. As far as this week's Raw, there are some things I liked, and a lot of things, frankly, I didn't. So before I talk about those couple of things I liked, and most of the rest that I really didn't, I've got two different topics that I want to touch on briefly that pertain to the characters and how they are presented. The first thing I want to talk about pertaining to this week's show, and it just kind of stood out to me this week, but it, it's something I notice every week when I tune in to watch Raw, is that these characters and the way they're presented, and more so the way they present themselves is a fucking joke. This is ridiculous. And here's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about everybody has to be six foot seven, three hundred pounds. Contrary to your beliefs, that's not true. I think everybody should be six ten, three fifty. That's in the main event scene. But anyways, all joking aside, to me, we're looking at these people as professional wrestlers. They should look like professionals. They should look like a cut above the rest, especially, especially if they're at the major league level, which is the WWE. And I assure you, compared to everybody else in the professional wrestling business today, the WWE is and always will be the major leagues. So I shouldn't feel like I'm tuning in to watch a bunch of single A or double A talent at the big leagues level. I just shouldn't be. Like Dean Ambrose, for example. My biggest gripe with him is, man, you got to do something with that comb forward. It makes you look sloppy. It makes you look like shit. Either get some of those terrible-looking LeBron plugs and try to do something about it, or just shave it off and do something else. Because that looks terrible. Even my Uncle Hugh would be ashamed of your comb forward. And that man, for years, knew something about a comb forward, damn it. I mean, hairline back here, and yeah, somehow his hair is all the way up here. I mean, Ambrose looks like shit. He looks dirty. And a lot of these guys on this freaking roster, when you see them, one of the things that strikes me is just how dirty they look. I mean, it's horrible. You know, I can sit there and talk about the way people like Hulk Hogan looked, and the Ultimate Warrior looked, and the Macho Man Randy Savage looked, and the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase looked, and even guys like Jake the Snake Robertson 
Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. You know, they were for the most part, maybe Jake Snake a little bit different, but they looked professional. They looked clean. They looked like they had actually fucking showered. I mean, unbelievable when I think about those people that I used to see. Although Rock, for example, and now I come and I see Dean Ambrose in his terrible fucking comb forward. Oh, Christ. And you got Dolph Ziggler. I don't even know what the fuck he's supposed to be. How is any spo man legitimately supposed to get behind a fucking character like that? Give me a fucking break. His stupid guy liner and all of his tooty fruity booty fucking gear that he wears. Jesus Christ, Kevin Owens looking like he came straight out of the bingo halls that he wrestled in for so many goddamn years. I mean, Jesus Christ, you're at the major league level. If you insist on wearing those ridiculous looking basketball shorts and those sloppy looking fat boy fucking sleeveless tees, can we at least make it look like you spent some goddamn money on them? It's bad enough your ass can't get in the fucking gym to at least cut yourself up and tone yourself up a little bit and lose a little bit more weight and look a little bit better. You know, why are you dressing like a fucking bum that literally just came out of an independent promotion getting paid 20 bucks a night to go out for the third match and do a bunch of stupid fucking half-gator head-first flips into a goddamn flaming table of barbed wire ass cracks? Holy shit, and then you got the Wyatt family, and it looks like the next time they shower is going to be the first time that they shower. Four hideous-looking dudes, and if you were using that as part of their shtick and their character, that's great. But you're not. They just look like sloppy fucking messes, and again, I come back to, you can say what you want about Hogan. He most certainly never looked like shit like that. Brett the Hitman Hart most certainly always kept himself looking clean and looking fresh. He looked like somebody you would want to aspire to fucking be. The Macho Man Randy Savage, the Ultimate Warrior, Sting, Ric Flair. These guys that plumped a lot of money into their gear, a lot of money into their wardrobes, a lot of money into their robes. They took great lengths to make sure that they presented themselves like they fucking mattered. They took great lengths to make sure they presented themselves like professionals. But now we got fucking Dean Ambrose in this ridiculous ass comb for it, and we got some guy... Who people want to push to the main event walking around in fucking basketball shorts looking like a dumb shit. Looking like a fat ass. You got freaking this dude trying to impersonate 30 different people rocking fucking guy liner. And then the Wyatt family. Again, it looks like they literally just got out of the pig pen. And they don't shave and they don't shower. If these guys can't take this more seriously, if these guys can't come across like professionals, then why the fuck should fans get behind them? And why the fuck would fans want to pay money to see them? And this is not something that's a minor gripe. This is a major fucking issue. We've gone from the fucking rock wearing Gucci and Versace to Kevin Owens wearing a sleeveless shirt and goddamn generic ass basketball shorts. And something else that bothers me about this company and the way they present certain things and certain characters present themselves, it's bad enough when you do the type of things that you do as a company consistently to undermine and devalue your mid-card titles. The last thing you need are for the performers that are actually carrying the titles to fucking devalue them. To me, winning a title on TV should be a big thing. If you're the title holder, you should act like a fucking champion. You should conduct yourself and carry yourself as a fucking champion. Because again, otherwise, why the hell would anybody take you seriously? Why would you have any legitimacy or credibility? Why in the hell would anybody want to pay money to fucking see you as the champion if you act like you don't fucking care about being the champion? I mean, seriously. So I look, and I see, like the New Day, and more often than not, they're actually rocking their belts. And I mean actually wearing the titles. When they're doing promos, they'll point to the belts. They treat the titles like they're very important to them. That, in part, makes them good tag team champions. To me, they elevate the profile of the belts because they actually act like those belts mean a lot to them. They conduct and carry themselves like those belts are as important as anything else in their lives, and that's how the hell it should be. Like, it was good on Raw to see Callisto come out. I think he was wearing his title. Good. He should be. But then I see somebody like Charlotte, and she's just kind of casually flipping the belt over your shoulder, her shoulder. Ah, bitch! 
You ain't The Rock. You ain't Austin. You haven't earned the right to be doing that shit. And what's really ridiculous about this to me is they could do something really special in the way they present her in terms of with that title. You've got her fucking dad, one of the greatest of all time, 16-time world champion, Rick Motherfucker. Woo! Why not sit there and present it in a way where that Divas champion really means something? Utilize all of your available resources that you have in the fold, and Ric Flair is one of them. Why not every time Charlotte comes out to get ready to come down the ramp for a match, out walks Charlotte, instead of her wearing her damn title, here comes her dad, one of the greatest of all time, two-time WWE Hall of Famer. He's holding her belt, and he's holding her belt above her. How much do you take notice of that shit immediately instead of her sitting there flipping it over his shoulder and looking fucking stupid? And then you got like Ambrose sitting there walking with it along his fucking side. You know, that's what makes him, to me, in part such a shitty Intercontinental Champion and such a shitty mid-card title holder. It would make him a shitty world champion as well. No! You want to elevate the profile of that belt. You want to carry yourself like a champion and conduct yourself like a champion. I get the whole lunatic fringe and this and that and everything else. But at the end of the day, can you at least have enough respect for the title and the people that came before to fucking wear that goddamn thing around you every once in a while? It's bad enough that you come like you just got out of the fucking bar. It's bad enough that you've got one of the most ridiculous, nappy-ass looking comb forwards I've ever fucking seen. Could you please be bothered once in a fucking while to carry the belt in a way that makes it look like it fucking matters to you. Like, oh, I don't know, wearing it like it's originally designed to do by fucking wearing it. At least with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, they're presenting it now that Triple H is the champion like it's the golden fucking thing. It's sitting there backstage. To me, I would have taken that a step further. I would have had it encased in like three feet of bulletproof glass. I'd have had security guards all fucking around it. You know, like I said, it's bad enough in the way... This company book shit that they devalue their titles. It frustrates me when the individual characters do those things that only make those titles seem less important and seem less valuable. So now that I got some of that shit off of my chest, let's actually talk about this week's show. And I'll start off with the good because I assure you this won't take long. There wasn't a lot. I like how the show kicked off with Ambrose being the one to come out and confront Lesnar. How they had Ambrose try to stand tall face to face with Lesnar. They didn't sit there and do any shit with the Wyatt family. You bring it up, but then you move on from it. No reason to dive right into it right now. You save that for fast lane and afterwards. I like that. I also like the fact that Roman Reigns didn't come out during the opening promo segment. You know, Dean Ambrose is going to be in this triple threat number one contenders match. You need to build him up. You need to create some heat, some tension there between him and Lesnar. Not just the fact that Roman Reigns and Lesnar once wrestled a year ago at WrestleMania and Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose are friends. That's not good enough. It's just not. And with the way they did this opening segment, even though the talking wasn't that great, and frankly a lot of the talking throughout the night was pretty brutally bad, if I may be so honest, I like the fact that they were actually trying to present Ambrose on an equal footing and in an equal light. I love the video package they did for the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. I really, frankly, was hoping that this was going to be one of those situations where they were just announcing his induction in the 2016 WWE Hall of Fame class. Yeah, the guy from Silsby, Texas. You're going to be in Dallas, Texas. Why not? He's not retired. He's Mark motherfucking Henry. He deserves it. Damn it. Um, I also liked Sasha Banks' promo in the sense that they gave her some microphone time, which is good, introducing people to the character, because contrary to the hardcores and the NXT crowd, not every single person that watches Raw every week is fully familiar with Sasha Banks and what she represents and who she is. So it's good that you give her this opportunity to develop some type of uh, character of any kind. And then the fact that you're actually, in some ways, trying to touch on something instead of just disregarding it, by talking about her and Team Bad and talking about how they're still supposed to be girls, even though, you know, Sasha wants to go off and do her thing. As many times as we see them in the Divas division, and we're going to at the end of the match between Sasha and Becky, they just do stupid shit that makes no fucking sense. Here was a point in time where you at least got, God forbid, a little bit of fucking continuity. And then, by the way, they can do this our truth and gold dust shit for months. I don't give a fuck. We need a little humor in this shit. We need to have some fun, damn it. 
our truth and gold dust. You know, is, is it a rip, rip off the book dust? Who gives a shit? Do they need to wrestle? No! Just do these segments for months. Do these segments all the way up to WrestleMania. It gives me a little comic relief. And at this point in time, I need it. Now we get to the Academy Award winning segment. Ah, damn it, that's not it either. Shit. But at least I can say this. I'm a three-time Grammy Award winner. That's not it either. Pass. Like so many things on this show. They just let me say, and what the fuck? Like you look at Lulia Garcia, you stupid bitch, you have one job to do. How can you fucking be so botchfilled? And frankly, at times I know they've been a little ruthless to her in terms of the way they taunt her and tease her. No, in this case, I'm glad Vince was back there at fucking gorilla position telling JBL and everybody to fucking bury her because she deserves to be fucking buried. How the fuck do you say the Usos are Grammy Award winners or Slammy Award winners, you stupid Harry Bush cunt? Why do you still have a job? What purpose do you serve? If you can't even introduce the wrestlers right, why in the fuck are you doing the job where the one function is to introduce the wrestlers right? And then even once the Usos are out there, why do we need to send them at the social outcast? Why do we need to beat the social outcast? Why not give some type of illusion that you're actually trying to get these guys fucking over? You know, it's this whole baby face has always got to win bullshit that turns so many people off to the baby faces in WWE. And speaking of shit that's just absolutely frustrating, the whole Divas division this week. Like I said, I love the Sasha promo in, in terms of what it represented for trying to spotlight the character and at the same point in time trying to touch on something, um, you know, and not just completely dropping Team Bad like a bad habit. But you get this whole thing. First, we'll go to the fact that you've got Brie and Charlotte backstage. They're talking about Nikki's neck injury. Charlotte's saying something. So all of a sudden, we're supposed to fucking like Brie Bella. Excuse the fuck out of me. Where the fuck did this come from? And now, not only that, she's beating the fucking Divas champion, Charlotte. Wasn't Brie just getting beaten by Natalia and or Paige the past couple of weeks? I could be wrong. But now she's magically recovered from that to where people hated her. And she's fucking losing to now people are supposed to like her because of her sister's injury. And now she's fucking beating the Divas champion. Holy shit, Christ. Some revolution, my ass. It's the same shit. It never ends. And then you've got Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. Hey, whatever, fine. Maybe you have a number one contenders match between these two at fast lane. Fine, that makes sense to me. But they're sitting here wrestling and Team Bad's out there ringside. And then Team Bad attacks Sasha. Predictable, but okay, again, it makes sense. To only all of a sudden now, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks are fucking teaming up and joining forces to fend off Naomi and freaking Tamina, my daddy's a killer snooka. What the fuck? And worst of all, it's one thing if Sasha gets the help, but afterwards, tease some animosity between the two of them. Or have Sasha fucking take out Becky Lynch. Or have Becky Lynch sneak attack Sasha this time. Get her revenge. All of these things would have made more sense than what the fuck you did because it was fucking stupid. Speaking of fucking stupid. Speaking of fucking stupid. Guy Liner versus Fat Boy in his 30s in fucking basketball shorts. Dolph Ziggler versus Kevin Owens. How many fucking times have we seen this match and Kevin Owens has beaten him? you got Kevin Owens that clearly should be on a different trajectory at this point to build him up towards something at WrestleMania, whether that would be an Undertaker, which seems unlikely, maybe an AJ Styles, which even that seems kind of unlikely. What, what the fuck does Dolph Ziggler matter? So first of all, why are we having this match again? And only this time now, we're actually having Dolph Ziggler win. What intent is this serving? What purpose is this for? And how fucking stupid can this company be? You've had your time with Dolph Ziggler, and he fucking doesn't get it, and he doesn't fucking care, so fuck him. People can kind of get behind Kevin Owens. You've got to build him up a little bit. You drop the ball enough with him in other areas. Why would you sit there and have him freaking job one, two, three in the middle of the fucking ring to Dolph fucking Ziggler? Why would you put over this fucking stupid piece of crap? Can I get three claps and a fuck Dolph Ziggler? Fuck Dolph Ziggler!
And then they do Titus O'Neil in a random ass match against Tyler Breeze. It's great. Titus O'Neil's on TV. It's great. He's fucking wrestling and winning the match over another jobber. What purpose is this for? Why are you doing this? Why aren't you spotlighting Titus O'Neil in other fucking ways? It's just stupid. It's just absolutely stupid. Ms. TV. Now, sure, people will talk about how great it is that AJ Styles got more over throughout the course of that segment and never really had to say much of anything. And the Miz still represents one of the true heels in WWE today. And I've talked about that many times. And, and all of that is true. However, there's just something in the back of my mind as I'm sitting there watching this and they're presenting it like they don't want AJ to talk, not because they're trying to get him over in a certain way, but it's because they don't trust him on that platform. And they want to teach him a lesson. And they want to show him how things are done in the WWE. And they want to make sure that he knows that even a bum like the fucking Miz is a bigger deal than he is in the big ocean of WWE world. I mean, Miz makes a good natural fit for me for AJ Styles as a fast lane. You get a guy that's clearly going to get booed in the Miz, a guy that clearly get cheered in AJ Styles. AJ Styles can go over Miz, won't hurt Miz, and nobody will fucking care. And it'll be a nice way to introduce AJ Styles in his first one-on-one -on -one pay per view match. If you do that, that's fine. But this segment I thought sucked, and Miz on the mic, frankly, fucking sucked. You've had all day to plan for this, maybe even all week, but that's probably giving too much credit. You probably had about an hour and a half after you were actually given the script of what you were fucking told to say. How could you bumble over yourself so many fucking times sounding like a goddamn jackass? This is supposed to be one of the traits that you actually positively bring to the table, Miz, and you can't even get this shit fucking right. And then you've got God. And with as many stars as this show is missing right now, we could use all the God we could get. I know God is amongst us. And God is everywhere in every match, in every segment. And that's all fine and good. But every once in a while, we would like some visual confirmation too. And this comes from your prophet, you, you, you. Your prophet right here. This guy. Right here. You know, the only time you sit there and you have him do anything is he walks up and he confronts Brock Lesnar. And that's it. He's not out there at the beginning. He's not out there at the end. He's not on any other point in this show. And I'm fine with the fact you kind of put him on the back burner a little bit because he's not actually wrestling a fast lane. But let's not forget... Lesnar, Ambrose, Reigns, number one contenders match. Winner gets a shot at Triple H in the World Heavyweight Championship. WWE style, WrestleMania 32, baby. Might be nice to incorporate God just a little bit more on the show. And then we get to the main event. And it's not just about the fact that, of course, you send out your tag champs the New Day to job out to Reigns and Ambrose, and this is supposed to be cool. This is fucking stupid. Tired of these baby faces always going over in this fucking way. You know, you did nothing to build any type of real tension or potential to do anything interesting between Reigns and Ambrose. It's just, oh, we're still good friends and buddies, and I'm Reigns, and I'm going to get up on the rope, and we're going to make this Ambrose a spotlight night and have him win with a sloppy-ass look at Dirty Deeds. Come forwards for everybody! Oh, fucking A. My bigger problem with this is actually what they did afterwards. I mean, you knew it was coming. There was no surprise. You knew Brock Lesnar was going to come out and lay waste to somebody. And that's part of the problem. They build up Brock Lesnar so much to the point where nobody is really a credible threat and nobody's a real challenger to him. You feel like nobody can beat him straight up legitimate and clean. Like even The Undertaker had to use his tapping torture technique in order to beat him at SummerSlam. So now you get to this point now where you've got Lesnar coming out, and it's just like you always assume that he's going to smash through everybody. And it, at some point in time, that shit gets old, too. And what really bothers me about this, and the way they present Lesnar is, Lesnar's not the fucking champion. Lesnar is wrestling for the same shot at the title at WrestleMania, just like Dean Ambrose and just like Roman Reigns. So why the fuck doesn't Brock Lesnar have to wrestle matches on Raw? Why in the fuck are we not trying to make it if we're the authority and Triple H as difficult on him as possible? This speaks to the whole stupidity of the authority angle in terms of the authority and how they set shit up. Oh, it's great. God won the belt. Praise God. It needed to happen. 
But you would think the whole analogy, or the whole philosophy, I should say, would be to keep your reins as far away from that fucking title as possible, and if anything, use fast lane as a way to send a message by maybe having Triple H smash fucking Ambrose, just completely fucking smash and destroy him with the help of the League of Nations or whatever the fuck else. But here we are on the road to Fastlane, the path, the road to WrestleMania. Ambrose and Reigns have got to work matches every fucking week. Brock Lesnar doesn't, and Brock Lesnar doesn't even have to show up every fucking week. Now, you know, at some point in time, you got to sit there and say, this dude's the beast incarnate. This is Brock fucking Lesnar. This is the guy, the man, mind you, that beat God two out of three times. This is the same man that ended The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. If I'm trying to soften anybody up, if I'm trying to do anything to any one person in that match, wouldn't I want to do it to Brock fucking Lesnar? Why in the bluest of blue fucks would I leave this guy as fresh as a rose? Why in the fuck would I do that? If anything, I would want to punish Brock Lesnar and make him regret his choice. Make him regret being in this fucking match. I maybe wouldn't even have booked him in the fucking match to begin with, but since you have, you can still make this make more fucking sense than you do. But of course, this is the WWE, so like so many other fucking things, it doesn't make sense. Once you get out of the whole aspect of the story between Triple H and Roman Reigns, you got fucking Stephanie facing off with Ambrose and Reigns. Uh-uh. Let the champ do that. Let God do that. So a lot of things were aggravating about this show. A lot of continuity problems. There's a lot of stupid, bad, dumb habits that the WWE can't seem to get themselves out of. I mean, it really looks like Fastlane's not going to be very good. And WrestleMania 32, no matter how great God is and all of his magnificence, that show is going to be complete shit.